There we go. Start the recording. <laughs> so we're going to learn how to use, how to make a pop art like I've been doing for quite a while. I'm now going to switch over to share my screen. And I'm going to hit select, show my mouse pointer. Ex excellent. Okay, so today we have mainframe's beautiful face stare, smiling smirking more smirking at us and uh, this is what we're going to use to make a pop art image now just to give everyone an idea um well, it's not that bad actually i thought it was a very low k uh image that i had but i was wrong i generally like to use the largest image that i possibly can because you will always get uh, a nicer crisper better looking uh, turnout in the end if you've got a higher resolution picture that's a good recommendation for pretty much anything that you're going to be doing when you're working with Photoshop graphics or anything else um, what uh, I totally blanked oh yes what I'm going to be showing you here it's a tutorial on how I do this it's not going to be a tutorial on how to use Photoshop so if I'm switching between different tools that you don't quite understand which they are or you can ask in the chat and uh, Treed will read it out loud to me yep. um, but I'm going to avoid the basics and just kind of go into the main show here so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my drawing. Yes, that's right, I draw. So I'm going to use my pen tool here, which is one of the most useful tools in the toolbox, and I'm going to start just drawing. Yeah, that's right, I'm going to trace out mainframe's head here. I draw every piece of each of these portraits to just, um, you know, each, each piece I, I actually draw it out. And you know what? I'm going to go back. Sometimes I'll draw something and I'll realize, you know what? I forgot something, like I forgot his ear. And now it's all pixelated. I hope the refresh rate's working well for this. Um, but yeah, sometimes I will zoom in very close just to get the right feel. That's right. I'm not worried about getting every single pixel, getting every single uh, piece of it in there because I don't have to be exactly perfect because in the end, it's just going to be an overlay. Um, so I don't have to be 100% perfect, but I am a bit of a bit of a perfectionist, so I will sometimes go in, tweak things that it really doesn't matter. So I've got his basic head shape here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my eyedropper tool and try to get his complexion. And I'm looking in my color picker over here to make sure that it comes out the way that I want it. Okay, now I'm going to go back to my pen tool and I'm going to fill that path. Bless you, Treed. Okay, and now I've got just basically his head. And it uh, doesn't look like much right now, but don't worry. <laughs> It'll all make sense in the end. Next, uh, I'm going to do his neck. And this is good because the, I, I practiced this on Heather Williver's photograph the other day, and she had a hand and fingers in that. And I'm not going to have to worry about that with mainframe because it's just, just his head. Well. It's got arms, but that's about it. All right. And now I'm going to again take another sample of the neck because the neck, of course, is not going to be the same color as the head. It's generally going to be darker. And sometimes I'll come back and I'll tweak them and change them around if I don't think they're dark enough or whatever. So I've got the head, the neck, and let's, let's do some arms. Uh, 
Again, you see, I don't, I don't have to be too careful here because I know his shirt's going to cover it. And I think this might be the only one that I'll be doing that I actually pay attention to the graphic on the t-shirt because it's very indicative of mainframe. It's his logo, so I'm going to make sure that I do that. Now, you see, I'm trying to get the the color of his arms here, and it's coming out very dark. And I don't want it quite that dark, so I'm just going to select a color myself. All right. And let's... Uh, Let's draw the shirt. I feel like I should have music playing or something. An email had said never use Photoshop. You know what? That's totally fine. And that's what I'm expecting most people to be here for. Um, my husband has at times just looked over my shoulder while I was doing this and just had fun watching me do it. So that was one of the reasons why I decided to do this as my panel. Um, actually, it was it was that and uh, Val Ford and Laura Nicole that uh, helped me come up with this idea. So kudos to them. I think they're both at some event this weekend. Not not the other dragon event, but something else. So it's a shame that they can't be here. Mainframe, I think your shirt's a little big on you. Look at it all floppy here. That's the other thing. Uh, when you're working on photos and you're doing... Uh, fun things in Photoshop. A lot of times you zoom in nice and close and you get a different perspective and a different angle than you would normally get. And uh, it's 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 sometimes funny. And I tell you, I've seen more close-ups of family members' noses and eyebrows and oh, you name it. Especially for work, I, I get all these <laughs> these funny, funny close-ups. Okay, I'm just going to tweak that one there. There we go. And now I've got his basic shirt. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to do his logo. Like I said, I don't normally do the logos of shirts because it's generally not the point but this is a particular case so I'm actually just gonna cheat on this one hang on watch this uh -uh. Yeah, I guess I gotta do that I was trying to think how I could straighten out the logo but I guess I can't So if you see there, I just used a uh, a layer effect to create the the what am I call it the outline. And unfortunately, it made an outline down there. I didn't want that, so I'll just have to fix that. sometimes I select the wrong thing there we go and uh, now 
I'm going to do the G. This is a cool t-shirt and a cool logo, I must say. Kudos. Well, I've just been uh, promoted on Twitter for this particular panel by J.R.D. Skinner. Thank you very much, J.R.D. He said, help a mobster out and go to Ustream and support Nuchas. So, yay! If, if you want support from a podcaster, that's the place to go. Oh, my. There's so much support over at Flashpulp. They're very into helping people out with their you know promotions and what's going on and just supporting each other's creative efforts which is nice I hear furious typing. Yes. <laughs> All right, so we've got our our G. And you see it's not exactly perfect, but it's perfect enough, you know? You'll you'll see later on why I don't have to be 100% and it actually works a little if there's a little overbleed. All right, so now we're going to go in and we're going to draw the details of his face. So in order to do that, I need to hide the head and the neck. And I think we're going to start with some hair. Get the nice color for the hair. Hair and beard. See, it's interesting when uh, doing beards on people is... is uh, is is interesting because I've got the, you know, I've done the beard on Chooch and uh, Earl Newton, and they've got very thick beards. And then there was the beard that I did for PG, and he's got that scruffy kind of see-through beard. That one was interesting to do. I like how that one came out. Uh, is expressing what all of us are feeling. Mm -hmm. She said, "Fascinating. I am riveted on my screen." Oh, good. I'm glad. I was so afraid people would be bored. So you can see why when I'm doing a lot of work, I listen to podcasts. Ooh, sorry. Because while I do need to think to do this, it's not like reading or writing. Um, just having music isn't enough for me it, 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 most times. I need to hear people talking. I need my brain to be active while I'm doing this. So this kind of work, I mean... I don't actually do this particular exact thing for work, but when I'm working, I'm using this pen tool that I'm using. I'm using that all the time. Um, generally, I do most of my art in Illustrator, and that, for anybody that understands, that is Vector, and uh, Photoshop is Raster, and the difference being Vector are clean lines that can be increased and decreased in size without changing anything raster are pixels. Uh, you can see there the little squares that are making up mainframe's face here. These are all like that's what pixels are. They're, they're the little boxes. So uh, a higher resolution image would have more of those boxes. So the closer you get the less you actually see them. So when I'm doing stuff for print I'm always trying to do it in vector. Number one, it's a smaller file size, which is good for transferring to the printer. And number two, I, I can they can print it at billboard size, which, eh, by the way, it's really fun to be driving down the street and seeing a billboard you made. Just saying. That's fun. Or going to the movie theater and seeing an ad that you made. That's fun, too. Seriously? 
Yes. This is for me. I don't know. Is, is the tool you're using causing arcs to appear? Uh, it, yes. Yes. Uh, the arcs. Yes. I, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the tool that I'm using is the pen tool. And if you notice, there are different arcs appearing. This is based on the Bezier's curve. This is an old drafting tool that actually exists. If you go into an art store and you ask them for a Bezier's curve, they can help you. And basically, it's this little tool that you can make perfect, ang um, perfect arcs and angles and everything. And this was used in commercial printmaking and illustration for years and years. And what I'm doing, just to give you an idea, let me zoom in, a, in an area. When I click, I'm dragging, and that creates anchor points. Depending on where I put the anchor points will determine how my arch goes. Because I put the anchor point down south on the screen, I guess you'd say, I have my curve going south. And I can make perfect angles by holding the shift key. Uh, did that answer your question, Treed? Yes. He says yes. Excellent. All right, so now I'm going to, so, uh, oh, I already got my color. All right, so I'm going to fill that in. All right. And we see that, uh, actually, you know what? I don't like how thick it is on that one side. I'm going to fix that. Uh, but when when I fill it, you're going to see that the the brown is it works well for his hair, but his beard actually changes color, and I'm going to I'm going to change that up in a bit, so don't worry about that. Okay, but before I get on to adjusting the beard and everything, I'm going to move on to his lip because we can only see one. Get the color there because the beard is hiding the rest of it. Yeah, the the dorky uh, and what I think interesting thing about Photoshop and Illustrator and everything is all of the tools that we're using are based on actual tools and methods that are used before computers came around. Um, you know, they call it Photoshop because everything that was in the toolbar you would find in a Photoshop in the darkroom. Um, and the Illustrator tools, it's everything that would have been on your drafting table. Some of those have made their way into Photoshop and vice versa. Alright, so next we're going to work on the eyes and the eyes is the most detailed part. If you screw up on eyes, you've screwed up. <laughs> um, if you mess up somebody's eyes, then your whole picture is off. Uh, the eyes can be very telling. I can make somebody smile in a picture who's not actually smiling, but if I don't have the eyes right, people can tell. So the eyes are the most important thing. And I'm going to first do the off-white part. And you see how I use my eyedropper and it comes up with a peach thing, a peach color. And we, we, if I made it that actual color, it wouldn't quite look right. So I just tweak it myself. All right. Now I'm going to hide that so I can do the eyeballs. Mainframe has very blue eyes. The color picker doesn't quite get. There we go. Uh, need it to be a little more like that. There we go. That's the right color. And before I go on, I'm also going to do the pupil.
because if you don't have pupils, then it looks really funny. All right, so now I'm going to just copy this over to the other eye so that they're exactly the same. And the whites I'm going to use as my template for where to get rid of the extras. So you see how I had perfect circles for each of his eyes, but I just removed all that outside the perimeter. So that's how you get nice, perfect eyes. And I think our next bit is we're going to move on to the glasses. Now, before I go on, I haven't done something in a while. I'm going to hit save. <laughs> when you are working, save, save, save. I, uh, just the other day, was working for a half hour and completely forgot to save. Now, these glasses are interesting. They're very, very thin wires. So I think I'm going to stroke the path. Let's see how that works. Sometimes I'll be working on one of these and I'll just have to experiment. Um, you know, you try something, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That sort of thing. All right, this is my question, so you don't have to... Repeat it, yes. Answer. Yeah. Um, couldn't you use a thick line just to tr trace out the, the glasses using that arcing? That's actually what I'm going to be doing. Awesome. Yes, normally, normally, uh, sorry, uh, Treed asked, couldn't I just use a dark line to trace using this arcing tool to trace out the glasses? And that's actually what I'm going to be doing. I, um, he's got these brown type glasses, and I'm going to use my brush tool to create what what it is. Is we make a stroke. So I think that's too big. Three is too big. Let's see. One, uh, maybe. Let's see. Maybe two. We'll see how that works. So I'm going to stroke my path, and now I can't tell if I see anything. <laughs> Hang on one second. Um, wow. That. Why? Oh, I know why. <laughs> it would be good if I had my opacity to 100%, but right now it's at 10%, so when I stroked my path, we didn't actually see anything. Stroke the path. There we go. So now, if you look, you can see that I've got a very thin uh, stroke for these glasses. And now I'm going to do the same thing, but for the brassy bits. Yes, that is a technical term, the brassy bits. <laughs> And I'm going to stroke that. Oh, wait. I should select my color first. And again, I'm going to, I'm just going to tweak this color just a bit so it looks nice and brassy. Um, stroke that path. Now, if you notice, I'm deleting all of the, the arc lines. They're not actual lines. They're just guides that are in the, You know, they don't actually count towards the photograph, or the image, rather. And now I'm going to trace out just these little pieces, because they're a bit thicker. All right. Excellent. And now we have his glasses. And just to, let's just give a, a look at just the glasses part. You can see how they're set up. Okay, so we've got the glasses. Now I think we're up to eyebrows. I almost missed the eyebrows. Now this is the most important thing. 
Uh, sometimes you'll be doing an image and for instance you notice his eyebrows are actually they're kind of faint and they're hidden by the glasses but if you don't draw them in it's gonna look weird um, when you're just doing photo editing of somebody with eye, uh, just regular photo editing you know and you look and their eyebrows are very thin one of the things I always do is I always darken and people with thin or light colored eyebrows I darken in the the color of the eyebrow because without the eyebrow people look funny and they don't look like they do in life so cuz sometimes when you're taking a photograph of somebody their skin shows through their eyebrow more than their actual eyebrow does and it's very important I, I, one of the things that I have as a pet peeve is I really really do not get um, this this idea that some women have where they have removed their eyebrows and uh, they'll just trace little lines or they'll have very faint eyebrows and you know that's that's not so good cuz uh, <laughs> it makes you look funny <laughs> that's just basically it now if you notice because he has light eyebrows I only put the opacity to these at 50 percent because I don't want to add something that isn't actually there in his face all right, I'm going to hit save, and then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to draw the lines of his face. Okay, and I'm going to start with the nose here. And this is the important part, because without this, then it just looks flat and there's no definition. And I have to say, I, I'm seeing a couple of things pop up on Twitter, which is kind of neat. I saw somebody say I was amazing at what I did, so whoever that was, thank you. Growl is just popping up in the side there, so it's uh, it's a little tricky. And I wonder... Uh, no, I'm not going to do that part. All right, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do the lines of his ear. That's right, nice and close up of the ear. Oh, mainframe, don't you wish you were watching this instead of being at Dragon Con? <laughs> uh. <laughs> yes. Well, I did ask his permission before using his image. So he knows that everybody's seeing, seeing his face all nice and close. All right, and now. Are you working in on the, on the details in there? Yep, I'm just. Are you just doing whatever each in here? I'm, I'm doing all the details. I'm just tracing them all out. All the details of his face, you know, his eyes. Every line that I see that's important. One of the big things that you need to do is you need to do these lines on the eyes. Again, I said earlier that the lines are the most important thing to to get and that's that's 100% true because if you don't have your eyes right it just looks funny it really does and I'm not connecting all of them because oh because uh, you know they're they're not shapes they're just lines all right let's see where else do I need lines I must say mainframe you have quite the smooth forehead I didn't have to put any lines up there yeah. doing the lines of his neck the hardest one I had to do that gave me the most problems Good question, Lulu. Um, hmm. Well, I do know that uh, getting PG's beard was a little tricky, but once I figured it out, that was pretty easy. Uh, I think one of the hardest problems is if somebody gives me a picture that has a lot of darkness in it. I did one for Sunrise Robin, and the picture was very dark, so it was tricky getting getting the right contrast there. The fingers in Heather Welliver's picture were, were tricky, but a challenge, but a lot of fun for me. Um, I can't really think of who was the hardest, though. 
All right, I think I've got all my lines set up, so I'm going to stroke them. And so I just want to make sure that my brush is the right thing. All right, so we're going to... And that's just how we did the eyeglasses, but this time we're using a, a, a softer brush. So if you notice, we've got lines there for everything. So now I'm going to turn on his face. Oh, I've got a little bit of the ear I'm going to have to put in there. But let me, I'll do that in just a moment. So if you notice, we've got pretty much everything done in block colors. And I'm just going to add to this because I forgot this part of his ear. And that would not look good. That's that's one of the things when you when you've got everything done, you you take a look and you make sure everything's there, that you're not missing anything. Um, I'm looking here, and I can tell you right now that his glasses. I'm gonna need to darken them up a little. Let's see, where's the glasses? That's the eye. That's the eyebrows. There's the glasses. Because the brassy bits don't really look too brassy. So I'm going to change that color just a bit. So I'm going to go into replace color. Where are you? Okay. I'm just going to tweak this just a little. There we go. Um, I can make him lighter or dark. Oh, I think I like it darker. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it like that. So now we can see actually his glasses a little bit better, and that's good. So I'm going to hit save. And before I go on, now we're going to start working on the dots. So I'm only going to look at this part. I'm going to copy it all. I'm going to start a new image. Is there a question? Uh, it's um, Photoshop, not PSP, uh, and I am using CS3. I uh, kind of, I'm one of those people that refuses to upgrade unless I have to. I went from Photoshop 7 to CS3 uh, only because 7 wouldn't work on the Intel Max, and uh, simply because when they upgrade, half the time they don't change much, and the other half the time. Um, you know, there's there's problems, <laughs> and I just like to wait for them to to move on with those problems. So I have not moved up to the newer version, and I've heard some scary sounds about the next version having a subscription. All right, so I, now I'm going to take the image, and I'm going to make this grayscale. Okay, and before I move on, I'm going to just tweak with the levels here, make sure I've got lots of bright. And a lot of times what I'll do is I'll actually tweak things that I wouldn't normally want a picture to look like. You know, they, a picture could end up being too washed out, but for this, it works. So now I'm going to go into bitmap, and I'm going to make that 70, uh, let's just make it 180, whatever. And if you notice, I'm doing a halftone screen. Uh, the frequency for my, the, the screen is going to be round, so they're going to be dots, and the uh, frequency is two per inch, and that's just not enough. That was what I had for the last one I did, so I just undo that. And I'm going to need to add into a, a larger number here, so let's make that 15. All right, that's still not enough, and we're going to go back. See, this is the part where I go back and forth a lot because I got to find the right frequency of the dots. And there is a filter that will just take an image and make give it dots, but I just don't like how that comes out and yeah, that would be a lot faster, but it just doesn't do the same thing. Um it All right, that's too much. See, this is the trial and error part. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so far I think I like this. Ah, uh, yes, Treed said it's the part that takes the most time because you have to estimate, guess, and keep coming back. That's right. So now I'm going to copy everything in this file and now paste it 
all the way on the top in this file and I'm gonna oh, hang on let me turn all my layers on why is this not doing it uh, I gotta turn them all on All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this layer to overlay. And so now you see I've got all these dots. And it looks a little funny. And I'm not sure I want that one on overlay. Let's see, maybe I'll do it multiply. It depends on what I'm doing. Um, particular photos I've used overlay, other ones I've used multiply, some I've used screen, whichever. As you notice, the dots are pretty dark right now. What I tend to do is I will open up the hue and saturation and I will actually create a color for that, for the dots. So instead of it being black, it's going to be a color. And I think, I think uh, blue might be a nice color for, for mainframe's picture. So if you notice, now the dots are turning blue. There we go. And uh, then I'm just going to bring that fill down so it's not so bright. You know what? I'm not sure I like the blue. I'm going to change it. Yeah, I think I like a more brownish color. I think that'll work. Again, more of the trial and error. Alright, I think I like how that one looks. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to erase the dots from his eyes because that actually makes a difference. Oh, and I totally skipped a step. I apologize because I've just realized it. I skipped the step of uh, giving a little bit of depth to these and that's where I use my burn tool. So I'm just gonna all of my shapes I'm gonna give it a little bit of depth here. so it's not so flat. And I still need to work on that beard. I haven't done that part yet. So let's get on that. And the beard, I'm gonna just do a little dodge tool here. And I'm going to put a little white on there because I'm sorry, mainframe, but you're you're starting to gray, and I want to be accurate here. Oh, that's too much. There we go. All right. So there we have it. We've got mostly done. Now you notice we've still got the background. And now I'm going to add the background in last and I'm just going to pick a color. Any random color. Um, I actually think I'm going to give them like a sky colored background. And I'm going to then put in some sort of a graphic style in the back. As you notice in, uh, excuse me, the other ones I've done, I've done lines, I've done, you know, uh, starbursts, I've done all sorts of things. Um, let's do that and, oops. I don't like that color at all. <laughs> there we go. And I don't like that actually. Forgive me, I'm just trying to find a nice color that will 
work out well. Oh, that one looks good, I think. I think that one looks good. And I'm going to add one more thing to this that I haven't done to others, but I think it works very well with mainframe. I'm going to give him a cape. I think mainframe needs a cape. So we're going to we're going to give him a cape. I mean it it just goes with the whole superhero thing. <laughs> yes, the super. Yes. And I'm going to add the little piece up here. That's right. <laughs> well, if you've read any of Mainframe's uh, bit strips, he has a whole series of him with his superpowers and uh or him as a superhero there's there's many mainframes in the multiverse and that's actually a quite a lot of fun yes i'm putting a, i i'm hearing trade's granddaughter here and she's talking i hear her saying you're coloring a cape i think that's what she's saying oh hello kitty oh say <laughs> There we go. And, oh, you know what? That I did in the wrong layer. I need another layer. Okay. And now I'm going to move this all the way up to the top so I can see it. Oh, that I think came out really good. <laughs> I'm quite impressed with that. And I'm just going to give it a quick border. Um... I think I'm going to give the whole thing a border. All right, and uh, let me go back to my blending options. Make that uh, fill is zero. Oops, sorry. And then my stroke, I want it on the inside. And we're going to change the color here just a bit. Oh, I like that, and we're going to make that. Uh. Yes, yes, I am saving. All right, so I think that came out, uh, that came out pretty darn well. Yeah, I'm going to just lighten up those yellows, squares, or diamonds, rather. I think that those could lighten up. And we have got ourselves a mainframe pop art, cape included. So I hope everyone enjoyed that, and I got it just in time to finish the, the panel. And now we've got an infinite loop going on here. <laughs> Let me just quick change over to, uh, where is it? There we go, S select that one. Seriously? Okay. All right. Well, we're just black. Sorry about that. Anyway, uh, so yes, we've got everything done. Are there any questions? And, and now I get to wait for the eight second lag. That's okay. It means I get to get, take a drink. Ah, oh, you're welcome, Nathan. I didn't realize you were in the chat. Awesome. <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I'm I'm very happy. Hey, look at that. 11 people. 23 people have come in throughout this uh this viewing. So, I'm I'm pretty impressed at that. Thank you everyone. I'm I'm very happy that you came. I hope you enjoyed it and next year I'll have to come up with something completely new to show you. <laughs> Thank you, Nathan. Yes, I'm a star, superstar. So, uh, and if anyone has any requests or whatever for the pop art, I do them willingly. I do not do them on any schedule. I do them on whims. Uh, sometimes I'll do a bunch in one month, and sometimes I won't do any for a couple of months. I've got, <laughs> for bandwidth fundraising, off, auction off a picture, says Skips and Sensei. You know, um, that'd be great, actually. Uh, 
the only thing is when it comes to the pop art I don't really charge anyone for it, anything but no I was not using GIMP I was using Photoshop um, but you can do essentially the same things in GIMP um, from what I'm told uh, so anyway so uh, I don't I don't charge for this I just do it because it's fun I will say that if anybody wants high quality prints of any of these uh, they are available I can get them done I have a company that I work with that does Gilsey uh, prints or Gleasy prints sorry I mispronounced that and uh, that's studio quality archival quality uh, for the people that I do them for uh, if you the only thing I say is that if you plan to like make money with it or mass market it or anything like that just send me some <laughs> send me something you know five dollars is more than enough uh, one person used it for an invitation for her uh, a big birthday we'll say I'm not going to put out her name and say how old she is but it was a big birthday and uh, she just sent me five bucks for the right to use it uh, for her invitations so that's all good if anybody wants to buy any of my prints I've got a few prints selected on sale for Dragon Cant uh, if anybody would like to get anything specific let me know and if anyone wants to donate to the Dragon Cant bandwidth website or anything like that I, I'm sure we're taking donations for something right something has to cost us uh, please do that <laughs> Lulu, you want yours? Send me a nice picture and I will do it. I've got a list of people, but the list is actually getting small, so I will take more. So, thank you everyone, and please, 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 please make sure that you go to SVLE's panel in just a few minutes on blogging with SEO. And if you don't know what SEO is, that means you need to be going to that panel. After that, we've got M. Plested and J. J. M. Murdoch, bleh, excuse me, J. R. M. Murdoch reading, and then Brand is doing a reading, and Patrick McLean. We've got a nice host of events, so please hang out. Dragon Cant is awesome. And now I get an ad. Ah, I will be ending this as soon as my ad goes away. <laughs> uh, all right, thank you everyone, and uh, I will see you on Twitter.